Hey there, it's Greg New Laura, seem to be famous one day, Nick Dutch back on the camera again one more time. Hi there, how the heck's it going? It's great to be back here doing yet another video to make everybody out there nice and happy. I've received a private message. You know, if you've got any questions you want to ask me, then feel free to ask. Send me through a private message. Can't guarantee, you know, that you'll get the answer that you want, but you'll basically get my interpretation at that present point in time, okay? Uh, and that's if I think that the question is worthy of answering. This particular one is curious. It says here, I'm wondering what is your own personal definition of left-hand path? Well, first and foremost, it, it, that very question presupposes something. It, it, it presupposes I've got a concept of paths. And secondly, it presupposes that I've got a uh, conceptualization of a good path as opposed to an evil path. Uh, which I don't think it's quite like that, although I do occasionally use words like positive and negative. Um, that's more like um, ways to, you know, to elaborate upon a concept using language rather than necessarily saying that there are objective goods and evils. I mean, there's all kinds of things which grate against me, or I personally think are inappropriate. And I often base this on what I know, or what I think, or what I what I found out about history or forces which have made things happen throughout human history and so on and so forth or indeed just things which I personally just like rub me up the wrong way or go against like um, an educated or reasoned uh, perspective I mean the new atheist movement I think that that could be roughly described as being a bit of a negative couldn't it um, especially to the atheists because it makes people who identify with the label of atheist as, uh, to look like a bunch of xenophobic right-wing, you know, ethnic nationalist, extremist, um, prejudiced, bigoted, fearful, neurotic, paranoid, irrational, um, unintelligent, unintellectual, low-life, really. Um, you know, I mean, I, I, I think there's... There's seriously disturbing things about the way in which a person from the New Atheist Movement thinks. And these people are exhibiting the behavior and thought processes of someone who's really rather screwed up. So, I, you know, that resonates against me, not with me, if you get my drift. Uh, from theological points of view, I am... Hmm. That's difficult to say because I because people will represent and misrepresent their own theological stances in whatever their way, way they see fit. But misrepresentation is a very powerful way of conveying information. You've actually got to be in the company of these people. You've got to be living with them or studying with them or being directly a part of their circles. And they've got to have sufficient trust in you uh, to allow their allow them to feel comfortable to show their you know their true or their inner nature or their true values. For you to be able to ascertain where they really lie. So, do I have enough information? Well, in some cases, yes. There are some attitudes within paganism which, are, um, again, are verging on the same or similar things to what I've seen in the New Atheist Movement. These sort of like xenophobic, um, ethnic nationalist and irrational or anti-rationalist perspective. Uh, which has been useful for the creation of the Wiccan religion and popularity of the Wiccan religion. But I really think that Wiccans should spend their time separating themselves from that period in history in a much more powerful way. I know there are people within paganism who don't want to be associated with things of a Christian nature, but there are things that are both within Christianity and within paganism, but are not necessarily the, the, the defining characteristics of either, but are still important for the people who are part of those trains of thought. And I think that these people uh, had better sort of start focusing much more on that and less upon how to draw a circle with various symbols around it or what colour candle to burn on a Tuesday at 3 o'clock in the afternoon when it's raining. Or, uh, you know, all this idolatrous, 
bollocks, you know, it's, oh, it's, yeah, it's not good, you know, I mean, if all this, um, subcultural badges was taken away, the crucifixes from Christianity, you know, the, a lot of the literature, just having some of the good ideas just hanging there in the air, and the same with paganism, get rid of the pentagram, get rid of the god and the goddess, and just have the concepts there without, you know, circles and robes and the rest of it. What would you be left with? Social cohesion. And love for your fellow man. Which is actually quite nice. That's, that's good. That would be, by your language, right hand path. Alright, so, so once you've taken away all the things which obscure your thought processes, then things are good. But you can use those things which can obscure your thought processes to build up your understanding of something of a higher theological nature. And I think that's what it's there for. But people get hung up on the literalism. Or they think that it's much more important that if a person's going to reach a clear understanding of God, that they do it in only one particular way. Um, which happens to be their way. Which is only slightly semantically different to the way of the guy down the road. And because of that, they hate each other violently. Uh, you know, just because, I don't know, there's like one letter different in a word somewhere. or Just... You know, just remove that stuff, get rid of it. It's the goal and what is underlying, which is important. Just like with, the, you know, as I said, with, with, with occultism. If you could remove a lot of the superstition and the mythology and the rest of it, what you'd end up with is just a strange experience, okay? But with religion and religious paths, so to speak, if you remove a lot of the dogma and symbolism and the rest of it, you'd just be left with some very pure concepts. It's just like the person growing up, getting stronger and better within society, uh, forgiveness, tolerance, acceptance, love for humanity, caring for nature. And it's the same with um, Christianity and with paganism and Wicca and all the rest of it, and probably Satanism as well. It, you know, it's, it's, it's all there. And maybe that, that level or that of, of understanding and ideas without all the balderdash, maybe that is the pure right-hand path. All right? And everything else, and I mean everything else, would be left-hand path in one manner or another. So, this is why I am a deist, or a deist, more than anything else. Because this is very close to the ideas of Thomas Paine. Okay? And I will always be a deist, of sorts. And I may participate in different religious movements on the way. But I will see and accept as fiction anything which is written in religion. Useful fiction because it illustrates something about something, but it's an illustration and therefore will be quite inaccurate or useful in some ways but with some bits missing. But I would have to use my more advanced intelligence, my more rational and objective stance, to be able to work out what that thing is supposed to be doing for me, and whether I want to go in that direction, or whether I don't, or whether I want to do that later on, or now, if you get my drift. So... is Richard Dawkins' left-hand path, definitely. Is any hard proponent of the New Atheist Movement left-hand path, definitely. Are fundamentalist, literalist, Bible-believing Christians left-hand path, definitely. Are 
Wiccans who are dogmatic left-hand path, without the shadow of a doubt. Are ghost hunters who don't question either whether ghosts exist or what the nature of a ghost being is, left-hand path, without the shadow of a doubt. Have I been left-hand path? Yeah, naturally. But I am trying, trying to become what I would conceptualize of as right-hand path. And one of the most powerful ways that I can do that is to accept that I don't know something when I truly don't know it and not to try and muddy the waters too much with fiction or beliefs unless I use that as a stage towards clearing the waters, so to speak, rather than making them muddier with more dogma. Uh, what you're saying.